Welcome to my first attempt at video blogging. It's going to be about software engineering, software development, and the tools we use to do that. There'll be some rough edges on these videos as I learn my way around it. I'm expecting to learn plenty, and hopefully you will too. For this first video, I'm going to start in the basics, one of the more general purpose tools that we use in software engineering, the keyboard. I will be unpacking and unboxing this. Hopefully in here is a Keychron K10 mechanical keyboard, plus some interesting accessories, which we'll look at now. So I've been using mechanical keyboards for several years now, but it's only recently that I've started exploring customization and kit builds specifically. Uh, particularly as a Mac user, I found myself frustrated at the lack of readily accessible um, support in this area. Keychron are a manufacturer that provides some excellent keyboards with Mac support. Um, they also support PCs. Uh, they're available in a variety of form factors. They have a huge range of products, um, most of which can be configured with features such as white or full RGB backlighting, many of which come with simultaneous wired or multi-device Bluetooth-based uh, wireless support. Um, most of their keyboards are offered in ready-to-use assembled versions. In fact, I think all of them are. Uh, one exception is their new Q range, which is also available in a bare-bones kit form. Their stock keyboards are offered with um, various switch options. Uh, some keyboards also come with hot swappable switches, uh, and you can also order replacement switches from from Keychron themselves. It's not quite full kit build, but as a first foray into customization, it offers a great deal of convenience and cost-wise, um, it compares very favorably with buying individual components. Plus you have the advantage of building on a keyboard that starts out with a great underlying feature set. In fact, I already have a Keychron keyboard, which I've been using for some time now, this one here. I'll just move this out of the way. So this is the, the K1 V4. As you can see, it's a low profile keyboard. Um, I ordered this one with the Gatoron Browns. Gatoron uh, is another manufacturer. Most Keychron keyboards come with Gatoron switches. These are the, the brown variant. This is, as you can see, the 100% or full size keyboard. Um, this is now sold as the K5. The K1 is now exclusively an 80% range. I think that just helps Keychron keep their products um, easy to understand. Um, this has the same core feature set as the K10 that I've ordered here. The K10 in here is also a full size. Um, that is, it has switchable PC and Mac support, and it also has a switch for the wired or uh, wireless operation. And the variant I have here has full RGB backlighting. Again, the same as I've ordered here. But as I mentioned, um, I ordered this with standard Gatoron brown switches, which means this isn't a suitable starting point for customization. Now, you may notice there's another keyboard here. So I'll just move this one out of the way. Uh, this here is a DAS Keyboard Pro. This has been my daily driver for the best part of four years now. It was my first mechanical keyboard, and I absolutely love it. It's built like a tank, if you hear that. Um, and this, again, is the um, Cherry Brown switches. So this uses standard Cherry Brown, Cherry MX switches, and I ordered this with the, the Brown variant switches. Um, the, the thing I love most about this keyboard is actually the volume dial, which is nothing to do with the keyboard itself, but I just cannot live without this volume dial I have found. This is the main reason that the K1 hasn't become my, my daily driver. It was for a while, but I found myself um, longing for, to have my DAS keyboard back, so here it is. Um, this particular DAS keyboard, um, I have replaced the keycaps. Um, these are a set of Mistel PBT double shot keycaps. Um, the original keycaps were ABS, and after four years they had developed that slippery, shiny feel that ABS keycaps uh, often do. This isn't a dedicated keyboard channel though, and there are plenty of those, and I'm not going to go into great detail about PBT versus ABS, suffice to say those are um, different types of plastics that are used for keycaps. If you're into keyboards, as I am increasingly getting, you will, you'll do all the research yourself. But if you'd like me to do a video on that, let me know in the comments. Now, you may be wondering, why so many keyboards? That's a good question, and in fact, I have more. Um, but it's a quite a complicated answer, quite a lengthy one, and has got absolutely nothing to do with why I ordered this. Suffice to say, for now, um, I've yet to find my forever keyboard, though this DAS does come close. But maybe it could be in here. So what I'm expecting to find in here is a Keychron K10, as I mentioned, fitted initially with a set, a full set of uh, Gatoron Blue switches. There should also be in here a partial set of 
cater on greens, which are even clickier than the, than the blues, I'm told, um, and a set of browns. Um, partial sets because I'm not intending to replace all of the keys with blues, well, all of the blues with greens or with browns, etc. But I am interested to experiment with switching out particular key groups um, with different switch types. Also in here should be a switch pillar to puller tool and finally an additional set of double shot keycaps, though in this case they are ABS. So let's get into it. So now we're into the entirely unscripted section of this video um, and I get one shot at this because I'm not ordering another set of this as cost effective uh, as, as the Keychron customization option is. It's still not chump change. Um, I think the order here was best part of $200 US, um, including shipping, which is still not bad. Um, a full customized you know, kit build with PCBs and housings, etc. could easily run upwards of $350, $400 US dollars. Um, I imagine there are cheaper options around, but if you want decent decent gear, that's what you're looking at, so I'm told. Um, so I have my trusty tool for getting in here. Let's have a look and see what we've got. I have to say, um, I was very pleased to receive this in very short order. I ordered this just over a week ago. Um, shipped from China, I believe. So it arrived here in New Zealand in a little over a week. Um, based on previous experience with K Keychron packages, I'm expecting this to be very well packed, and so appears to be the case. Lots of bubble wrap in here, so very well protected. And, yep, if we just unwrap one more. Oh, and another one. There we go. Okay, so what do we have? So we have one box of mechanical switches. These are the Gator One Greens. Switch green, 35 pieces. We'll have a look at those in a second. And another box, these should be Gator on Brown, 35 pieces. That's, and this is the switch puller tool, very nice. And this is the replacement keycap set. Okay, I don't know if there's any kind of um, holders in place in there, but it sounds like a few have come loose at least, but we'll have a look at those in a second. Um, I only ordered these uh, out of interest and curiosity. Um, I quite like the, the colour mix and the legends, um, and Keychron key sets are some of the few key sets that actually come with um, Mac OS legends on the modifier keys, which is one of the things I really like about them. Uh, I have to say, I did order at one point a replacement set of keycaps for the DAS keyboard from DAS themselves, and was very disappointed to find that that um, those keycaps did not come with Mac OS modifiers. So, this is rubbish. And this is the keyboard itself. This is the main event, as it were. Um, very similar keyboard um, box to the K1, as you'd expect. Very svelte looking professional black box. Um, it's got a bit of film wrap over it as well to protect it that little bit more. Nice picture of the standard keyboard that's inside there. Um, and it's kind of a, it's not embossed, but it's, um, Lord of the Rings fans might say, a mithril silver outline of the keyboard on the front. That, does look very nice for the money. I have to say, um, Keychron, as well as being uh, having great supporters of the Mac platform, um, are often one of the best value propositions for their keyboards um, out there. Great quality keyboards, great features at um, fantastic prices. And I should mention, this video is not in any way supported by Keychron. I'm just a big fan. Okay, so that's the outer film wrap off. Let's have a look, what does it say on here? It says here the Keychron K10 wireless mechanical keyboard, swappable RGB backlight aluminium blue switch. Yep, that pretty much sums up all the features that I ordered on this particular configuration. So let's have a look in the box itself. Okay, we have a nice bit of foam, foam packaging and a map to help you find your way around the keyboard. Um, but on the back, as I expected to find, there's also some instructions um, for accessing uh, some of the features. So the, the wireless pairing, for example, um, requires obviously certain key combinations to be activated. Um, and it can be paired with uh, up to three Bluetooth devices and switching between them. Also, the instructions for all that are on the back here. So very handy reference card. Although there aren't many features that are controlled through the keyboard, so it doesn't take long to, to get those in memory. 
A little warning card here, very nice. Make sure switch pins are straight before inserting switch. And please be gentle and make sure to align the pins with the socket properly. All very good advice, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not actually going to get into switching um, any switches out in this video. Um, that will be the subject of another video and another time. Okay, so into the keyboard itself. Okay, that's nice to see. We've got a bit of additional protection on the keyboard. So a nice little wrapper for the keyboard there. And we've got this plastic overlay holding everything in place. Nice. And to the keyboard itself. So, as I mentioned, this was ordered with the blues. That's quite a lot clickier than the browns on the baby brother over here. Hold this up to the microphone. So that's the browns. And that's the blues. Yes, that's very clicky. Right, um, but other than that, no real surprises. It's a full 100% layout. Um, and you can see pre-fitted with the uh, Mac modifier keys. Um, and you can see on the, the function keys as well, those are also um, have legends for the, for the built-in Mac functions on those keys, such as media control, etc. One of the nice things I found with the K1 actually is that this key, which is corresponds to, if you're on a PC keyboard, would be F13 or scroll lock, I believe, from memory. It's a long time since I used a, an actual PC keyboard, but I think it's scroll lock um, or maybe print screen, one of those. Um, out of the box, this will be assigned to a screen screenshot shortcut in macOS, which is nice. So what else? Um, we got the full manual in here. Um, yep, no surprises there. Um, oh yes, one one thing that I've just noticed is that the switches. So on the K1, the switches are on the back plane here. On this K10, they're off to the side. As is the USB-C. Uh, input connector for the cable, which is one of the things that I've read about. This is slightly annoying. Actually, in my setup, that's going to work quite well, I think. Speaking of the USB-C connector, here it is. We've got a nice right angle cable, nice braided cable, nice to see, um, and a standard USB-A on the other end. Also in the box, um, again, fully expected to see this, as I had one with the K1, is a key puller tool. So when you do get into um, replacing your keycaps. This tool is provided there. And finally, a set of, not replacement keycaps, but um, they do provide these um, keycaps which provide the standard PC uh, modifier legends, if you like, so um, Alt. And if you don't like the orange escape key, you can swap it out for the, for the, uh, for the gray one. The other orange key in here is a brightness key, in case you want to replace the um, uh, that keycap there with that. Okay, so that's it for what's in the box for the keyboard itself. Fantastic. What have we got in the rest of these boxes? Let's put this back over here. Let's have a quick look in the ABS keycap set. As you saw, the keycaps on the, the K10 itself are fairly understated gray um, color, with the exception of that bright orange escape key. Um, and I was quite keen to try this replacement set offered by Keychron themselves, which as you can see is a very smart uh, white and dark blue. Um, one slightly disappointing thing with these, which I, I knew when I ordered them, um, but the legends on here um, are not translucent, so they won't allow the RGB backlighting through, which is a bit disappointing, um, but quite, quite good illumination on my workstation here. So, yep, um, so two layers of, of keycaps in the box there. So I know that this gives me some options in terms of um, what colors to use on certain modifiers. So again, we've got a blue escape key as standard. That's this one here. Um, blue escape key as standard. There we go. Um, and I have the option of swapping it out for a, for a much more um, What's the word I'm looking for? A much more assertive, shall we say, red escape key. Yes. 
And then we have the switches. So what do we have here? There we go. So these were the browns. Yep. Fantastic. Great. Yes, that's very um. So that's the, the browns are the, the tactile key. Um, so you get a bit of a click or a bit of a bump, I should say, but without too much of a click. Fantastic. And in here should be the green switches. This one I do need to. There we go. We have the green switches. Yep. Look at that. As advertised, green and yes, quite quite a bit clicky. Uh, let's just um, do a quick comparison closer to the microphone for you. These are the browns and the greens. Oh yes, very much more clicky. Um, now obviously, once you actually get the switch installed on the keyboard and the keycaps on, they add more um, kind of tonality to the, to the sound. They change the, the sound of the switch. is not um, the only thing you hear when you're bashing away on a keyboard. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what difference they make once they're actually installed on the keyboard. Which brings me finally to the switch puller tool. Now, I've never seen one of these before, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, it looks like this is actually from Gatoron themselves, rather than so everything else is um, Keychron branded. Uh, this is Gatoron because the switches, like I say, are Gatoron switches. There we go, we're in. And there we go. Okay, that's pretty funky. Um, yeah, I've never replaced a switch before, so I can't really comment on whether this is a good looking tool. It's, um, it's certainly a tool. Um, one kind of fun thing is this key on the top, which doesn't appear to, to do anything with the mechanism at the bottom. Yeah, we shall, we shall find out how that works later, I guess. So there we have it. Fantastic. So that's been the Keychron K10. Uh, I hope that was a fun unboxing. And there'll be another video shortly when once I've done some experimenting with the switches um, and we can get into maybe I'll in that video I'll talk a bit more about the different keyboards that I have and um, why, I've, why I've got so many and what each one does for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly did. First time I've done an unboxing video. Um, felt a bit weird, I have to say. Um, but Looking forward to making more of these videos. They won't all be unboxings. I should be covering um, a wide variety of topics around uh, tools and coding um, and a wide variety of languages. So some of you may know that uh, I have a, a long history as a Delphi developer. More recently, I've been obviously more active in the, the .NET space um, and even more recently, uh, working a great deal with Golang and microservice architectures and Kubernetes clusters. If you've read my blog at www.deltix.co.nz forward slash blog. You may have seen my posts on that recently. So um, I'll be continuing to update that blog as well as making videos for this channel. Um, if there are particular videos you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments. I've put links to the Keychron and Dask keyboard websites. They're on screen right now. They'll also be in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.